Hallelujah. The one who watches over his word to perform it. The one who upholds all things by the word of his power. So if God changed his mind about something, praise God. Or if he, if he um, decided that he was not going to uphold, honor his word, uphold all things by the word of his power, the whole world, world would crumble. So Elijah knew him. Praise the name of Jesus as the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the faithful one, the one who is the same yesterday, today and forever, the one who has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, the ones whose promises are yea and amen. Hallelujah. The one who is beautiful for every situation. Praise the name of Jesus. So he knew him as all those wonderful things. He knew him as the covenant keeping God and not the covenant breaking God. Because sometimes we may say something Oh, I'm going to do this for you or I'm going to be here at four o'clock and past four or whatever. I'm still not there. Praise God. But thank God, God is not like that because he never fails and he never changes. Praise the name of Jesus because he's the same yesterday, today and forever. So, so he, Elijah was speaking to the wicked king Ahab and he said, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives before, before whom I stand. And we know that God is not going to die again. Praise God. He sent his son, Jesus, and he died on the cross and he, and God rose him up from the dead on the third day and he spoiled principalities and powers and he made a public show over Satan, triumphing over him at the cross. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we know that he's, his son is not going to die again. Praise the name of Jesus. He's defeated Satan. Satan is a defeated fool and he is under our feet. Praise God. And greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So Elijah knew that we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. Praise the name of Jesus. So he, he was saying to the um, wicked prophet, Ahab, he was boldly bringing him bad news because he was saying there's going to be a famine. There's not going to be any rain until I, for years until I say so. And the thing about it, he was not afraid of Ahab, even though he was the king, because he knew he was not the king of kings. He was not the Lord of Lords. Praise God. He's not the one whose word is forever settled in heaven. Praise God. He, he knew that even though heaven and earth will pass away, God's word would not fail. Praise the name of Jesus. He boldly declared the word of God right in front of the wicked king. He, he, he um, told him the word of God, exactly what God told him to say. And he was not afraid to speak to him. Some Christians are too afraid to um, stand up for what is right. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We give God honor and we give God glory. I remember... Um, there was a time um, my um, daughter, Christina, she was, uh, I think she was in year six or something, but um, she was quite young anyway, and she wasn't in a um, secondary school yet, and they had this um, program on, and parents were invited, and we went in, but well, actually it was um, sex education, and I, I went in. And then um, they were saying that um, your body is your own and you can share it with whoever you want to. My mind, these children are not even, I don't even think she was even 10 or 11. And you telling them that, you know, and then I I just had to um, say I didn't agree. But no one else stood up and said they didn't agree or anything. So that so many Christians are too afraid to stand up for what is right. We speak the truth of the word of God in love. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because for like when we fail to correct people and the Holy Spirit is prompting us to correct them, if they go the wrong way and they end up in hell, that blood can be upon your hands. Praise the name of Jesus. Because you're not giving them a choice. And um, the Bible says I call before you, just remind me 30, 19. Let's go there quickly, but please hold your place in 1 Kings 17 because I plan to come back there. Because he said, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, choose life. Praise God. So if we're not telling them the truth, how can they be um, set free? Because uh, many people, you know, the Bible says my people, I think it's Hosea 4 verse 6 or somewhere around there. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Praise God. So he's saying in Deuteronomy 30, 19, I call heaven and earth 
to witness this day against you that I have set before you life and death. The blessings and the curses therefore choose life that you and your descendants may live. So if we're not telling them the truth, how are they going to be set free? It's like we're making the choice for them or they're not going to believe. But remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I'm here to tell you the word of God is a powerful word. It's a healing word. It's a delivering word. Praise God. It's the word of wisdom. It's the word that gives you strength. It gives you knowledge. It gives you uh, anointing. It gives you ability to do the humanly impossible. Praise God. Because Jesus said, we'll not only do the works that he did, but we will do greater things than he did. Greater works than he did. Praise God. We give God honor and we give God glory. And the word of God is the solution to every problem. It's the solution to this to everything that we're going through. It's a solution to global warming and all these things. It's a solution to lack, praise God. It's the solution to um, driving down the crime rate. Praise the name of Jesus. It's a solution to stopping our murders, killing, stealing, and destroying, praise God. Because if everyone was to obey the 10 commandments, what a different world we would live in. Or if we followed the golden rule, do unto others as you have them do unto you this world will be a completely different place. So um, many believers are just too scared to speak the word. They see people going the wrong way and it's not helping. And love is kind. Praise the name of Jesus. Love corrects. Love does not fail. It does not humiliate people. Praise God. Sometimes you can call somebody aside privately and people can be corrected. And we can be corrected too. Because I can assure you I am not perfect. And there's room for improvement in my life. And I don't mind who, who corrects me. Sometimes God would even use an unbeliever to correct you. So we must not be in pride. He may even use a child to correct you. So we thank God for correction. So this prophet, Elijah, he boldly approached um, Ahab. Despite how powerful Ahab was. But he knew Ahab was not all powerful. Ahab was not all wonderful. And Ahab was not his redeemer. So he stood before him and he boldly told him, There shall not be dew or rain these years, but according to my word. Praise God. And his word was God's word, which he would have hidden in his heart, just like the psalmist David did, so that he would not sin against God. So he um, approached the king. He delivered the message. Praise God. He wasn't afraid that that king was going to murder him. He was just doing the will of God, the word of God, and lots of us, we need to follow in his footsteps and be bold, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Praise the name of Jesus. We have um, people like King David. He, he was not afraid. Goliath was um, exalting himself. He stood um, 40 days, you know, presenting himself before the armies of Israel. Praise the name of Jesus. He said, um, send a man to fight me. Praise God. And if I win, you will serve me. And if you win, we will serve you. Praise the name of Jesus. And then all of Saul and his entire army, they were afraid. Why were they afraid? Because they were not trusting in the Lord. Every fear failure is a, um, a failure to believe God. It is the fact that we are not trusting God. Hallelujah. It's because we don't have our mind stayed on God. Because if we have our mind stayed on God, God will keep us in perfect peace. Hallelujah. Let's go to Isaiah 26 verse 3. I'll be reading this one from the King James Version. Isaiah 26 verse 3. And I haven't forgotten that we're speaking about prayer. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because if you want to pray effectively, you have to pray the word back to God. So that's why we need to know the word. Study to show yourself a workman rightly dividing the word of truth. If you don't know the word of God, how can you rightly divide, divide it? Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. And then he goes on to say, trust ye the Lord forever for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. So we give God honor and we give God glory. So Elijah, he stood up before this wicked king, praise the name of Jesus. Many people would have been afraid that the king might have killed him or whatever and declared that there would be a famine for years. And he didn't tell him for how many years, praise God, according to his word. 
So back to 1 Kings 17, and I'm back in the Amplified Version of the Bible. The word of God came to him saying, and he told him to go and hide, told him to um, hide himself in the brook Cherub, east of Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And after a while, the brook dried up. And then he was sent to the woman of Zarephath. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now let's go to James chapter 5. Because Elijah, he knew the power of prayer. So I did say about Mark eleven twenty four. what things wherever you desire when you pray, believe you receive it and you shall have it. So you have to see yourself having it. Use your imagination to imagine holy things. Praise God. Even wicked people, they use their imagination and they were able to work in accord and were quite successful. In Genesis chapter 11, we see them using their imagination. They wanted to build a tower to um, be able to praise God so that they can go up to heaven and come down as they please. But God could not allow sinful men to go up and down in heaven as they please and pollute it. Let's, um, before we go to James 5, you can hold your place there. Let's go to Genesis chapter 11, 14, because there's power in imaginations, but we need to use our imagination for the right thing, not for the wrong thing, not to see all your children strung up on drugs, all your children as alcoholics, all your children as failures. You see them as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You see your children and yourself as the head and the head and not the tail. You see yourself as above and not beneath. You see yourself doing the, not only the works that Jesus did, but greater things also. See, you see yourself as doing, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. See yourself as an overcomer. See yourself as victorious. I am the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. I have a right to succeed. Praise God. I have a right to long life that I'm satisfied with. Praise the name. See yourself healthy. See yourself strong in the Lord and the power and in the power of his might. Praise the name of Jesus. See yourself enjoying the blessings of the Lord that make it be rich and add it no sorrow with it. See yourself as God sees you. He does not see you as a beggar. He does not see you as a little me. He sees you as his faithful servant who is an overcomer. Praise God. Who the greater one lives inside of you. Remember the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells on the inside of us. Hallelujah. So see yourself as a faith giant and having all your prayers answered and all your needs met over and above. See yourself being blessed to be a blessing. Genesis chapter 11 comes in verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one accent and mode of expression. And as they journeyed eastward, they found a plain valley in the land of Shinar, and they settled and dwelt there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. So they had bricks for stone and slime for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build a city and a tower whose top reaches the sky. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered over the whole earth. But God can make a name for you. Praise God. Because promotion does not come from the east, nor from the west, as we read. But promotion comes from God. Hallelujah. He has the power to put down one and lift up another. And when we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, he will. He will exalt us in due time. Praise God. Because there is a way that seems right to a man, but the ways thereof. Ah, the ways of death. Praise, praise the name of Jesus. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, because they are one people and they have all one language and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And now nothing they have imagined they can do. And now, sorry, and now nothing they have imagined they can do will be impossible for them. And we know with God, all things are possible. So as I said in Mark eleven twenty four, as the Bible says, what things do you desire? When you pray, believe you receive them, you shall have them. Just as how these people in Genesis 11, they had imagined that they could build this tower up to heaven. But, um, you know, same way you can use your imagination to um, 
imagine the blessings of God, seeing your prayers answered, seeing all your children saved, delivered and set free, all your family saved down to a thousand generations. Hallelujah. So we give God honor and we give God glory. Back to James chapter 5, Hebrews and then James. And the um, key verse is um, verse 17. When um, Elijah, he prayed, that they, they, um, he prayed that there wouldn't be no rain and there was no rain for three years and a half. And then he prayed again that there would be rain and then the rain came. But let's read from verse 14. James 5 comes in verse 14. Is any among you sick? He shall call in the church elders, the spiritual guides, and they should pray over him anointing him with oil in the Lord's name. So this scripture is commanding us to pray for the sick. Yeah, uh, there's sometimes there's even a prayer of commandment that you can pray and command the sickness, the disease to leave that person's body and for them to be healed. Praise God. So there are many different types of prayer. We have prayer of commission, I mean, prayer of petition. <laughs> we have um, prayer of committal where we can commit everything into God's hands. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You have prayer of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. There's many um, different forms of prayer. Praise God. So is any among you sick? He should call for the church elders, the spiritual guides, and they should pray over him, anointing him with oil in the Lord's name. So we can use the anointing of oil. Oil represents the Holy Spirit. And we pray in the Lord's name. So we have to pray in Jesus' name. Praise God. And Jesus has been highly exalted. And he's been given the name that is above all names. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Please um, just hold your place in, um, in James. And let's go to Philippians 2. Because Jesus has been given the name that is above every name. And at the name of Jesus, as I said, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. See, the people going to confess Jesus as Lord on this earth before they die and make him Lord and Savior. Or they're going to still confess, or they'll be confessing when it's a bit too late. But whichever way, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. So now is the time to pray and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. All right. We'll start from... Verse 5, Philippians 2, 5. Let the same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility. So Jesus was humble, so we need to be humble. So we're not high and mighty. We don't look down at people. We're no better than anybody. But just because someone is a billionaire or they have more money, that doesn't make them better than anybody else. We all need air. And if God didn't give us air and the ability to breathe, we'll all be gone. So we give God honor and glory. All our help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. And let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Who, although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, possessing the fullness of the attributes which make God God, did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained, but stripped himself of all privileges and rightly dignity so as to assume the guise of a servant slave, in that he became like men and was born a human being. And after he had appeared in human form, he abased and humbled himself still further and carried his obedience to the extreme of death, even the death of the cross. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Pardon me. Therefore, because he stooped so low, God has highly exalted him and has freely bestowed on him the name that is above every name. <coughs> Pardon me. That is, at the name of Jesus, every knee should, must bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue frankly and openly confess and acknowledge 
that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So, either we'll bow our knees to God now, or some people will be bowing their knees to God in hell, in the lake of fire, where the fire never quenches. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, back to James chapter 5. Or read verse 17. Because we're learning about how Elijah prayed powerfully. All right. No, we read, um, we read verse 15. And the prayer that is of faith. Remember they were praying for the sick. Praise God. The elders shall um, anoint them with oil and pray in the name of the Lord. And the prayer that is of faith will save him who is sick. And the Lord will restore him. And if he have committed sins, he will be forgiven. So this person is not only being healed from all their diseases. As Psalm 103 verses 1 to 5 tells us about the diseases. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. And forget not all of his benefits. Who forgives all our iniquities? Who heals all our diseases? Who redeems our life from destruction? Who crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfies our mouths with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. So if you think that you're looking old and haggard and you want to look younger, you confess. My youth is renewed like the eagles. Praise the name of Jesus. I'm getting better and better every day in every way. Praise the name of Jesus. I knew someone and I'm going to say who it was. But this person now, we grew up together. And he was a young boy and he would just call his name and say he's the most handsome man in the world and he would say you know quoting like he's from the ebony magazine and all these things so you gotta think good about yourself you know you want people to like you and to love you you gotta love yourself it begins on the inside of you you know um you love yourself because how can you love others if you don't love yourself a new commandment i give unto you that you have love for one another as I have loved you. So you gotta love yourself and love others. Praise God. You gotta know what love is. Praise God. And love is unconditional. Praise God. That's what agape love is. The God kind love is. Praise the name of Jesus. So that this guy got healed and he, he was saved and his sins were forgiven. Verse 16, James 5 verse 16. Confess to one another, therefore your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. The earnest, heartfelt, effectual prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its workings. Elijah was a human being with a nature such as we have with feelings, affections, and a constitution like ours. And he prayed earnestly for it not to rain, and no rain fell on the earth for three years and six months. So there was a famine, you know, after he prayed. He prayed so earnestly, so effectively. He had a heartfelt prayer. Praise God. It's like sometimes people may ask you, uh, oh, please, can you pray uh, for me to be healed when it's from whether it's from um, cancer, whether it's from diabetes or whatever it is, you know, whether it's from sickle cell or whatever. And sometimes some people, they, they, they offer up half their prayers and that's not the way to pray. Praise God. You need to pray like if you're praying for the person who you really love, like if you're praying for your mom, praise God, like if you're praying for your dad, for your child, praise God, like if it's a life and death situation, that like this person's life is depending on you, praise the name of Jesus, and you pray the heartfelt prayer, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, praise the name of Jesus. You're seeing that person, you know, when it's somebody that's on their deathbed, that you're seeing them coming off of that deathbed, praise the name of Jesus, hallelujah. If it's someone that is blind, you're seeing that person see and praise God. You see them no longer with that walking stick, no longer in, in that wheelchair or whatever it is. And you see them well, praise God, because you trust God, because you know him as the Lord that healed me. You know him as the Lord. He sent his word and healed our diseases. You know him as, as the, the um, Lord who healed the centurion servant, praise God, because the um, centurion, he had a servant and he was sick 
and at the point of death, praise God, and the centurion, he sent some elders to approach Jesus to say, come to my house and heal my servant. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And when the elders were almost approaching, approaching the Lord, he said, um, actually, don't even bother to come to my house because I am a man under authority. I said to the man, I said to one, do this and they do it. I said to another, do that and they do that. And he said, just speak the word and my servant shall be whole. Praise God. And Jesus spoke the word and his servant was healed in the self same hour. Praise God. So there is power in the word of God. There's healing in the word of God. There's redemption in the name of Jesus and in the word of God. Hallelujah. There is success in the word of God. Praise God. There's victory in the word of God. Hallelujah. He sent his word and healed our disease. So we need to pray fervent, heartfelt prayer. Like if someone's life is depending on it. Praise the name of Jesus. Like if you're praying for yourself. Praise the name of Jesus. Even though the battle is not ours, it's the Lord's. We use our faith. Praise God. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And if you're pleasing God with your faith, praise God, it can hasten the manifestation of your prayers. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We give God honor and we give God glory. So Elijah, he prayed. Praise the name of Jesus. Maybe there must have been some kind of flood going through um, the earth at that time that made Elijah earnestly pray to the Lord to um, stop the rain. Praise God. And, and no rain fell out. It was a powerful prayer on the earth. Praise God. For three years and six months on, they said no rain fell on the earth. They didn't say no rain fell in Jamaica or just in the city where he was living in. It said no rain fell on the earth for three years, three and a half years. That was a powerful prayer. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. They, uh, Ahab, the wicked king, he probably was cross with him. When is this rain going to come back? Praise God. But Elijah, he prayed, hallelujah, the perfect prayer. And he used his faith and God honored his faith because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And those who come to him must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And then he prayed again and the heaven supplied rain and the land produced its crops as usual. Praise God. We give God honor and we give God glory. So he prayed fervently and he got the results. Because as we looked in First Kings chapter 17, when he boldly approached the um, prophet, I mean the king, the wicked king, King Ahab. And he risked his life, you know, approaching that wicked king. Telling him what, what the Lord had said. He used this fight, praise the name of Jesus, because he said to him, you know, let's reread 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1. Elijah, the, th the Tisbite of the temporary residence of Gilead, said to Ahab, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, and we know God is a living God. He's not dying, praise God. He's alive and he's well, and he's faithful and he's wonderful and he's righteous and he's perfect and he's still healing. He's still delivering. He's still setting free. He's still making a way where there was no way. He's still supplying all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ. He's still protecting people even in the midst of a pandemic. Praise the name of Jesus. He's still comforting people even in the midst of death, in the midst of pain, in the midst of sadness. He's giving the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He's giving beauty for ashes. He's giving joy for mourning. Praise God. And he can turn your mourning into dancing. Just believe him. If you're lacking joy, pray and ask God for joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Praise God. It is a part of the fruit of the spirit. Praise God. So if you have all the other segments of the fruit of the spirit, if you have love, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, and faith, and you don't have joy, something is missing, something is broken, and you need that joy so that you can be complete because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Praise God. As I close, as I reread this verse, First Kings chapter 70, verse 1, Elijah, the, th the Tisbite of temporary residence of Gilead, said to Ahab, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew or rain <laughs> these years, but according to my word. And it was fulfilled in James 5, which we read. Hallelujah. I'll tell you the exact verse, even though we just finished reading. 
and it was fulfilled in verse 18. Praise God. Because when he prayed again, then the rain returned. Praise the name of Jesus. And um, it watered the earth and the crops were abundantly supplied and they grew. Hallelujah. We give God honor and we give God glory. So we pray that we will pray fervent, heartfelt prayers like Elijah prayed. Believe in what things we have. We desire when we pray. We believe we receive them and we have them. So Father, I pray God. We thank you for your word which came forth, Lord, unhindered. And we give you honor and we give you glory. Lord, I pray this word will help us to rise up higher in our prayers, in our expectations, Lord. In the name of Jesus, and I pray that when we pray for others, even though they may not be related to us, that we will pray the fervent, heartfelt prayer like your prophet Elijah prayed and experience wonderful, powerful results. Even though sometimes it may not happen overnight, let us be. Having done all to stand, that we will stand. Remember in Daniel, he prayed a prayer and the first time, the first day it was answered. And then he prayed again and he added fasting and prayer to his prayer. And it took 21 days for it to be answered because that principality had withstood the um, angel. Praise the name of Jesus. And the angel had to get another angel. And But they said from the first day Daniel had prayed, God had answered his prayer. So when you pray in line with the word of God, from the first day you prayed, believe in, praise the name of Jesus, God has answered. Once you've gotten rid of those hindrances, the prayer like unforgiveness, walking in strife with your wife, men ought to um, walk in unity with their wives so their prayers may not be hindered. So we th I thank you for watching. I pray the Lord will bless you. He will keep you. Praise the name of Jesus that will be well in every area of your life. Don't forget, if you saw this broadcast halfway, you can watch it on YouTube or you can watch it again. Please subscribe to my channel.